we're going to talk about the accident chain today. But before we do that, let's talk about our safety unit and building safe habits. An important part of being a healthy person is practicing safe habits. This means not taking unnecessary risks or potentially harmful chances. Life is full of risk. When you ride your bike, you risk falling and hurting yourself. You do not have to stop riding to avoid unnecessary risk. However, you must obey the rules of the road and wear a helmet when you do ride. That is just one example. Safety rules are based on common sense. These rules help protect you from hurting yourself. To be safe it is not enough just to know safety rules. You must use the rules to know and act safely. The greatest risks occur when people act ca carelessly. The following guidelines can help you act in a safe manner. First, don't give in to peer pressure. Perhaps a group of your friends want to ignore a stop sign or cross a busy street before the traffic light turns green. You may be tempted to risk crossing, but remember that you are risking your own health. Next, think before you act. When you are upset or excited, you may not concentrate on your activities or your actions. If you are feeling tired or rushed, you may not act carefully. Always keep your mind focused on what you are doing. And lastly, know your own limits. Do not take needless risks. Set limits before you start an activity. For example, if you're swimming in a lake or ocean, know how far out you can go safely and never swim alone. If you're a non-swimmer, do not go into deep water until you learn to swim better. Okay, so let's talk about the accident chain. This important concept helps you eliminate accidents or lower the risk of accidents. They often happen because of a pattern of five elements known as the accident chain. These elements are the combination of a situation, an unsafe habit, an unsafe act, an accident, and the results from the accident. So let's, let's take a look at one example. Okay, here's a situation. Jack wants to get a bag of cookies stored on the top shelf of the pantry at home. Okay, that's the situation. Next, Jack climbs on chairs and countertops to reach the high shelves. That's the unsafe habit. Then, the unsafe act. Jack steps on a chair with wheels to reach the bag of cookies. Then the actual accident. Jack falls off the chair. And then finally, the results of the accident. Jack sprains his ankle and he knocks over a lamp and breaks it. Okay, so let's look at where in this accident chain could it be the accident been prevented. You could change the situation. If, if Jack had kept, if the package of cookies was kept at a lower level, then he wouldn't have to climb. Unless they were put there so he wouldn't get to them. You could change the unsafe habit. Jack should break the habit of climbing on things to get to things that are high. Maybe get some help or climb something safer like a, a ladder, that uh, one of those small kitchen ladders that are, they're used for. Or change the unsafe action. Jack should always have a, something sturdy to climb on and get help from other people. So I want to review, let's review again the different steps. You may want to write these down in the, in the accident chain. We'll start from the beginning again. Let's see. The situation, the unsafe habit, the unsafe act, the accident, and the results of the accident. I hope these are helped you keep in mind these ideas so that you can act more safely. This ends our talk about the accident chain. Thanks.